Welcome back to Chemistry Matters as we continue with Unit 2 and our introduction to matter. We're going to move from the physical properties of substances to exploring their chemical properties. A chemical property is a characteristic of a substance that's observed during a chemical reaction. While elements alone are wonderful, it's the reactions of these elements with each other that make life possible. Most matter exists as mixtures or combinations of elements. Rarely do you find elements in nature that haven't combined with other elements. And what I'm describing now are chemical changes. A chemical change is any change that results in the formation of a new chemical substance. When two or more elements combine, they form what's known as a compound. A compound is any substance formed from two or more elements that have been joined together chemically. Remember that compounds don't change their identity through physical changes, but can be separated by chemical changes. In order to see a chemical change, you have to initiate a chemical reaction. Let's get back to our classroom with a new group of students to learn more about compounds. Does anyone remember the definition of physical property? A physical property is a characteristic that can be observed or measured without changing the chemical makeup of a substance. Good, good, good. So, can anyone compare and contrast physical properties and, let's say, chemical properties? Both of them are changes we can see and measure. But chemical properties can only be seen if what you're observing is a chemical reaction. That's right. So, what do you think are some chemical properties? The ability to catch on fire. Yes, we call that flammability or combustibility. A material is combustible if it catches fire at a temperature above 43 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, like this candle wick. A material is flammable if it catches fire at a temperature that is lower than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So, can you give me another example of a combustible material? Sure, wood is combustible. And how was burning wood an example of a chemical property? Because when wood is burned, it changes into smoke and ashes, and it releases a whole lot of heat. Great example of a chemical property. Both wood and a candle are combustible. They catch fire at a higher temperature. A flammable material will ignite in a lower temperature and burn vigorously. Now, what is the very first flammable material that comes to mind? Gasoline. Mm, alcohol? Great examples. Since we're in a chemistry classroom, I just happen to have some isopropyl alcohol here. Like I said, a candle is combustible, but the alcohol is flammable. In both cases, there is a reaction between the oxygen in the air, the candle, and the alcohol. In both cases, we call that reaction combustion. Now, flammable materials like alcohol undergo combustion at lower temperatures. Now, one of the most important chemical properties is reactivity, the relative ability to undergo a chemical reaction, combining or coming apart. A lot of substances readily react with other substances. Many metals are highly reactive, combining quickly with other substances to form compounds. For example, magnesium reacts very quickly with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide, as you're about to see. I'm glad we have on our safety goggles and aprons for this. Jessica, can you turn on the gas for me? Now, in this next demonstration, it's very important that you do not look directly at the reaction. This chemical reaction releases a large amount of heat and light and energy as the magnesium and oxygen are reacting together. Of course, these materials react very slowly. Corrosion or oxidation is commonly an example of slow reactivity in metals. To give an example, who knows the original color of the Statue of Liberty? It wasn't green? What was it made of? Copper, but copper's brown, right? Absolutely. So what chemical reaction happened to the Statue of Liberty? It oxidized. That's correct. Iron, copper, and most other metals tend to oxidize when they come in contact with water, oxygen, and other substances in the atmosphere. You commonly think of corrosion when you think of rust or old metal. Metals are often painted or coated with thin layers of less reactive metals such as zinc to prevent corrosion. Aluminum reacts with oxygen in the air to form a layer of aluminum oxide which protects the aluminum from further oxidation. This ability, along with the low weight, is why aluminum cans are used to hold drinks. 
Now, I need to know how much you've learned about the differences between chemical changes and physical changes. I'll present some situations to you, and you tell me whether you're seeing a physical change or a chemical change. Jessica, can you please turn on the gas again? Now, what do you think? Is this flash paper going through a physical change or a chemical change? Wow, I think it's a chemical change. Maybe it was evaporating and it turned into a gas. I don't see it anymore. But I smell it. I'll bet there was a chemical change and the paper turned into a smoke by combustion. Yes, the flash paper did combust. There was a chemical change. And did you notice the release of energy? Yeah, you could see a really bright light. That was a lot of energy that was released. Absolutely. Now, look at these two types of matter. This is pancake batter before cooking, and these are pancakes after cooking. So do you think cooking pancakes is a physical change or a chemical change? It changed from a liquid to a solid. So maybe it's a phase change, which is a type of physical change. Wait, a phase change from a liquid to a solid is like freezing, energy is removed. But when you cook pancakes, you add energy to heat them up. Right. So what kind of change is this? Cooking must be a chemical change. You can't turn the cooked pancake back into batter. That's exactly right. Cooking is a chemical change. What are the signs you're looking at to know if a chemical change happened? Color change, like the brown parts of the pancake. Lighter heat being given off? A gas forming, like the smoke we smelled. Are those all of the signs? Not all of them. In some chemical reactions, you may see a new solid substance form called a precipitate. Let's look at one more example. Here, please hold this in your hand. Now watch carefully and tell me what's happening, guys. The liquid is bubbling. The liquid looks like it's forming again in the top. So tell me, is this a physical change or a chemical change? I think it's a physical change because it started out as a red liquid, changed into a gas, and reappeared as a red liquid. So I don't think it changed into a new chemical at all. You're right, absolutely. It's a phase change. Can you name the phase change we're seeing? Vaporization, changing from a liquid to a gas. Good, good. Where did the liquid get the energy to become a gas? Um, from his hand. Exactly. Were there any other phase changes? Condensation, changing from a gas to a liquid. You're correct. Both vaporization and condensation are happening in this tube. Do you think that this liquid is water? No way. I've never seen water do that before. You're right. This chemical is not water. It boils at the human body temperature. It's called methyl alcohol. Do you think it has a weak or strong intermolecular force? It has to be weak because look how easily it can vaporize. That's correct. So I think now we're ready to apply what we've learned about chemical changes. By now you should have a solid understanding of the differences between physical and chemical changes. With those in mind, we're ready to travel farther down this road into the world of mixtures. A mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances in which each pure substance retains its individual chemical properties. Look at these four different colored candies and imagine that each one is an element in our atmosphere, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and argon. Notice that the candies aren't joined together. They each retain their individual characteristics just like the gases that make up our atmosphere. We'll learn even more about mixtures in the next video on the playlist. So when you're ready, I'll see you there.